Hello everyone, this is the fifth lecture in real analysis and we are going to talk about the Archimedean property. So the plan for this video is that we are going to prove the following statement. If a set A, that is a subset of integer numbers, if it has a supremum, then the supremum of the set A is an element of A. Then we are going to state and prove the Archimedean property and then we are going to provide an example. So let's go ahead and prove that if a set A, that is a subset of integer numbers, has a supremum, then the supremum of A is a, an element of A. So just to illustrate what this theorem says, suppose we have a set A that is a subset of integers, right? So it's going to be a set of some points, okay? So if the set A has a supremum, then the supremum of A is actually going to be an element of A and it's going to be an integer number. So from the picture is kind of obvious, however, we need to prove this. So let A be a subset of integer numbers, so A is a subset of Z, uh, and, and let it be such a set that it has a supremum A that is a real number. So if the set A is bounded from above, then by the completeness axiom, supremum of A exists uh, as a real number, right? So uh, what we want to show is that the number alpha, that is the supremum of A, is an element of A, right? It's a real number, but we want to show that it's actually in the set A. So let us look at this set A over here that consists of all of these points. And we have a number alpha. So by the epsilon criterion for supremum, if we look at the number alpha minus epsilon, uh, then uh, there exists an x in A such that x is larger than alpha minus epsilon. So <clears throat> this is... Um, the by the epsilon criterion for supremum and this criterion is explained in another video and I linked that video in the description to this video so in case you want to refresh your memory you can watch this other video but um, uh, just in case you forgot uh, what it means is that if we look at this interval over here there is going to be an, an x in A such that x is larger than alpha minus epsilon. So, um, okay, so let us choose epsilon equals to 1. So let us choose epsilon equals to 1. And by the way, all of this right here, this is scratch. This is just to help us uh, in, to understand the strategy for the proof, scratch. So in the clean proof, we can write that by the epsilon criterion for supremum for epsilon equals to 1, there exists an x in A such that x is larger than alpha minus 1 and it is less than or equal to alpha. So this inequality x less than or equal to alpha is really trivial it's because alpha is the supremum of the set a so uh, it is an upper bound of the set a so every element of a uh, is less than or equal to alpha okay so we have an element x so let's come back to this picture here so let's instead of alpha uh, epsilon let us say that we have one so we have here alpha minus one So there exists an x in A such that x is in between alpha minus 1 and alpha. Okay, so from the picture, it's kind of clear that the only x that can exist in here because is, is actually x is equal to alpha. We must have x is equal to alpha because the set A is the set of uh, integer numbers uh, so there is going to be nothing in between alpha minus 1 and alpha that is an integer number. So it has to be alpha. So this is our strategy. So strategy. Show that x is equal to alpha. 
uh, so x is an element of a so if we show that then we are going to show that alpha is in a okay so uh, let us come back to the clean proof so here we have that x is in between alpha minus 1 and alpha so case 1 x is equal to alpha then because x is an element of a alpha is an element of a and we are done because that's what we wanted to show we wanted to show that alpha is an element of a so the second case is when x is strictly between alpha minus 1 and alpha so this inequality here is a strict inequality so we want to show that this leads to a contradiction uh, okay so let us look at this picture here in the scratch so we have the point alpha we have the point alpha minus one and we have some element x in a uh, that is strictly between alpha minus one and alpha so we want to show some kind of a contradiction uh, so let us look at by the epsilon criterion for supremum there exists a point y in A such that y is strictly between x and alpha. Well, y could be alpha, but then we would be done. So by the epsilon criterion for supremum, there exists a point y in A such that y is between x and it is less than or equal to alpha. So of course, if y is equal to alpha, then alpha is in A and we are done. So suppose that y is strictly between x and alpha. So now let us look at the picture again. So let us look at this segment over here from alpha minus one to alpha. The length of this segment is equal to 1. Agree? Now let us look at this segment over here from x to y. So the length of this segment is smaller than the length of the segment from alpha minus 1 to alpha. So we have that y minus x is strictly between 0 and 1. And you can verify using these inequalities. Uh, so y is larger than x and x is in between alpha minus 1 and alpha, you can derive uh, just by using the inequalities that y minus x is strictly between 0 and 1. But y is in A, so it's an, in, it's an integer, and x is in A, which is an integer. So y minus x is a difference of two integers, so it is an integer. So we have that y minus x is strictly between 0 and 1, but at the same time it's an integer. So y minus x is an integer and y minus x is in the, in the interval 0, 1. But this interval 0, 1, it does not contain any integers. So that's a contradiction. And so this is what we wanted to show. We wanted to show a contradiction and we did. So that's the end of the proof, QED. So let us now prove the Archimedean property, but before we prove it, let us discuss it. So Archimedean property states that for every epsilon greater than zero, for every real number m, there exists a natural number n such that n epsilon is larger than m. So, of course, if the number m is negative, then there is nothing to show here because n epsilon is always greater than or equal to zero. So, the only interesting uh, statement here is that when m is positive. Uh, however, we state this property uh, for where m can be a real number just so that we have a more general statement. So, let's try to understand this. So, let's have this situation where the length of this segment is m. So the length of this segment is equal to m. And suppose epsilon is a small number. So let's just say that the length of this segment over here is epsilon. So what this property states is that we can repeat this small segment enough times 
in such a way that we will cover the larger segment, right? So we can repeat this, this smaller segment n times. So the length of this segment here will, is going to be n epsilon. And so n epsilon is going to be larger than m. So we can cover this uh, segment of, of the length m by sufficient uh, number of segments of the length epsilon. So before we prove the Archimedean property, let us discuss the negation of the Archimedean property. So if you want to negate a statement that involves quanters, we generally replace uh, for every with exists and exists with for every. So the negation of the Archimedean property is that there exists a positive number epsilon, there exists a real number m, such that for every n natural number, n epsilon is less than or equal to m, which is equivalent to saying that n is less than or equal to m over epsilon. Uh, so the negation of the Archimedean uh, principle implies that the set of natural numbers is bounded, which is, uh, we know it's not true. So of course that would imply the Archimedean property. So thinking about this negation of the Archimedean property uh, gives us an idea about how we should prove the Archimedean property. So of course this boxed uh, uh, writing here is scratch. So now let's go ahead and prove the Ar Archimedean property. Uh, so we need to prove this for, abs for every epsilon greater than zero for every m real number. So let us fix epsilon greater than zero and m real number. We want to show that there exists a natural number n such that n epsilon is larger than m. So if epsilon is larger than m, then this inequality is true for n equals to 1. So then we set n to be equal to 1, uh, and, and that proves uh, our statement, that proves the Archimedean property. So suppose now that epsilon is less than or equal to m. So suppose that epsilon is less than or equal to m. So in this case, we are going to look at the set of all natural numbers such that they are less than or equal to m over epsilon. So consider the set A, which consists of all natural numbers k, such that k is less than or equal to m over epsilon. So our strategy is going to be to show that the set A is bounded from above and that there is a natural number n that does not belong to A. So our strategy, we are going to show that there exists a natural number n such that n is not in A. But what does it mean that n is not in A? That is, n is larger than m over epsilon, which is equivalent to saying that n epsilon is larger than m. So showing that n is not an element of A is the same as showing that n epsilon is greater than m, and this is exactly what we are looking for. All right, so this is what we want to show. Um, so let us look again at the set A. So the set A is not empty because the number 1 is in A. And indeed, 1 is less than or equal to m over epsilon. And this is because epsilon is less than or equal to m. So also A is bounded from above by the number m over epsilon. Also, the set A is bounded from above by m over epsilon. So we have the situation where the set A is, consists of uh, natural numbers so they are equally spaced, and then uh, it's bounded from above by m over epsilon. 
Uh, so then by the completeness axiom of real numbers, it has a supremum. And then by the previous theorem, the supremum is actually an element of A. So the supremum of the set A is an element of A. So by the completeness axiom, And the previous theorem, m equals to supremum of A, is an element of A. Uh, so let's just recall what we are looking for. We are looking for a natural number n that does not belong to A. So we have here uh, on the picture, uh, m is an element of A. Uh, but it is uh, the supremum of A. So if we look at the number m plus 1, m plus 1 is not going to be in A because m is, is the largest element of A, so m plus 1 is no longer in A. So let us set n to be m plus 1. Uh, so it's not in A because m is the supremum of a. Also, m is a natural number, so n equals to m plus 1 is also a natural number. And so we, we proved what we wanted to show. We proved that there exists a natural number n such that n is not in a, and that finishes our proof of the Archimedean property, so QED. So let us now consider this example. We are going to prove that the set of natural numbers is not bounded from above. And we are going to use the Archimedean property to prove this statement. So we are going to do this proof by contradiction. So suppose that the set of natural numbers is bounded from above. So suppose that uh, there exists an upper bound m, so there exists m greater than 0, such that uh, for every k in n, k is less than or equal to m. So this just means that uh, the set of natural numbers is bounded from above. Uh, so by the Archimedean property, there exists a natural number n, such that n is larger than m. Uh, but uh, m is an upper bound for the set uh, nat of natural numbers. So that's a contradiction, right? But m is an upper bound for n. So we must have n less than or equal to m. So these two statements uh, provide us a contradiction and QED. So the set of all natural numbers is not bounded from above. So this is all for this video. Thank you for watching it. Please put a like underneath it. Please subscribe to this channel, support this work, uh, leave some comments below about what you would like to be featured in this channel. And uh, see you in the subsequent videos and be good at math.